grateful for the opportunity today to talk about the current state of the uh, world, Ireland's place in the world, and our country's policy of military neutrality. Given the language used in the motion, I think it's useful to begin with an examination of what we mean when we talk about military neutrality. Simply put, our policy of military neutrality as practiced by successive governments means that Ireland does not participate in military alliances or common or mutual defence arrangements. I've discussed this many times in the House, and I'm happy to clarify and put it on the record again today. We have no plans to alter this policy. Our military neutrality means a great deal to a great many people. The history and the instincts that inform it are important and valuable, and I understand that. And its birth is essentially World War II uh, and the position of Emma de Valera and the then Fianna Fáil government uh, to adopt the policy of neutrality on that occasion. It has evolved since then, and predicting the context of developing an independent foreign policy. However, the fact is that, that it is and will remain our policy it does not mean that we can isolate ourselves from the international security environment we find ourselves in today. All of us as serious-minded policymakers must continue to observe and analyse the situation as, as it evolves and ensure that the application of our policies remain fit for purpose in changing um, circumstances. Ireland's foreign policy has always been grounded in the principles of international law, human rights, equality, respect, dialogue and engagement. We have correctly sought to position ourselves as a voice for good in the world, as a champion of international humanitarian law, peacekeeping and peace building, disarmament and non-proliferation, and as a strong defender of a rules-based international order. I haven't heard any of that from the contributions I've heard so far um, this morning. Just ignore it. Just look at our record over the last two to three decades in terms of our role internationally, our role on the UN Security Council most recently in terms of pushing for humanitarian corridors in the most troubled parts of the world and in terms of peacekeeping. Our values must remain at the core of Irish foreign policy. Indeed, the Irish people would expect nothing less from this or any government. There are many countries in the world with which Ireland shares similar values and whose foreign policy approach is in keeping with our own. Some of these are members of military alliances or common defence arrangements. Some of these are not. We work with any and all of them as the issue requires. A salient example of our close engagement with such partners happened just last week in the context of our recognition of the state of Palestine together with Spain and Norway. And again, in terms of, 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 of that issue, we were right to do it in a coordinated way. We were right to do it in, in, in terms of both timing, uh, coordination and, and impact and in the context of the Arab peace vision. The security of our people and our country is one of the most important issues that any <coughs> government must consider. So I think I would like to talk about how this relates to our broader foreign policy and the reality of the world today. Across the globe and at home, Ireland and our EU partners face an increasingly challenging and contested security environment. Russia's illegal, immoral and ongoing invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 brought untold misery to countless of Ukrainian citizens. It has had an impact in our own country that we discuss and debate here on a daily basis. It also shattered the collective European security architecture. And doing so brought home to many across Europe and beyond the cold, hard reality of the world we live in today. In the same context, we know that Russia is demonstrating increasingly irresponsible behaviour beyond Ukraine, including through cyber attacks across uh, the European Union. Russia and other foreign actors are also deliberately targeting European societies, including Ireland, with false and manipulated information. We need to call out these threats and work with partners to confront them. In Europe's southern neighbourhood, we continue to face a horrible and completely unjustifiable conflict in the Middle East. <coughs> Again, an issue that we discuss and debate here on a regular basis. The government has been absolutely clear that this appalling war must stop. There must be an immediate ceasefire, the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, and a massive scaling up of humanitarian assistance. And as we've repeatedly said, we urgently need a political pathway towards peace that leads to a two-state solution, which respects the right of self-determination of both Israel and Palestine. And that's where I disagree with the deputies opposite, who want the dismantlement of the Israeli state. Um, and that will not bring peace either. In Africa too, hunger and poverty continues to drive conflict and stability and displacement. And this is an issue that is rarely discussed in this house, but it is massive in scale and is a major factor in, in terms of our own security here in Europe. Faced with this reality of this security environment, we cannot afford to tie our hands to isolate ourselves or to ignore our responsibilities towards our own citizens, our fellow EU member states or other friendly partners. 
The motion put forward by, the pe by people who for profit solidarity group is therefore problematic for a number of reasons. Firstly, it demonstrates a complete failure to understand the policy of military neutrality. And as I said, this means that Ireland does not participate in military alliances or common or mutual defence arrangements. As implemented, it reflects our security policies and the interests of the state. The motion by people before profit and the remarks by some in the opposition regarding the amendment, uh, the proposed amending of the triple lock are also deliberately erroneous, misleading and dishonest. There is no implication whatsoever through the amendment of the triple lock and Irish military neutrality. Absolutely dishonest to suggest that. Please and in deputy. reality, the government's Please, proposed deputy. modification of the triple lock, I didn't interrupt anyone, it's, and Deputy Murphy, a bit of courtesy and parliamentary decorum is called for me from time to time. You hate, you hate when the truth is told. In reality, the government's proposed modification of the triple lock does not impact in any way on our policy of military neutrality. In fact, the proposed changes will serve to reinforce Ireland's ability to pursue an independent foreign policy by removing the power of UN Security Council permanent members to veto our national sovereign decisions. It will mean that Ireland, militarily neutral, will no longer need to seek the permission of Russia, China, Britain, France or the United States to pursue our own sovereign, independent, militarily neutral interests or indeed to participate in peacekeeping missions. So Deputy Smith, we're simply saying we'll amend the triple lock so we don't depend on the empires. You've spoken at large about the empires, yet you want the empires to have a restriction on the peacekeeping through the veto on the Security Council that Ireland could participate in in the future. There's no logic to your position. Um, and in your world of empires, you still want those very same empires to have a veto on whether Ireland participates in peacekeeping or not. I don't want Russia in particular. I make no apology for singling out Russia. Its, it's, 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 it's behaviour is singularly shocking. You don't have the same emphasis on Russia. You don't have weekly marches against Russia. You'll do the occasional formulaic protests outside the embassy. You will, you will identify the United States all of the time. Fine, I'm not, I don't believe US foreign policy is correct in, in all areas, but I do recognize the huge Irish-American diaspora. I don't believe, Deputy, in boycotting Hewlett-Packard. I don't believe in boycotting Intel. The deputy's opposite would cause the loss of thousands of jobs in this country if their uh, reckless policies were to be pursued. Uh, and I think, I don't believe in doing that. Uh, but I don't believe that uh, the Security Council members should have a veto on our participation in peacekeeping. And that is not in any shape or form an attempt to disengage from the UN, it's, it's rather the opposite. It will allow Ireland to continue to seek to improve the UN from within, while addressing the fact that our involvement in international peacekeeping can currently be held hostage by the veto-wielding power of any one of the five permanent UN Security Council members. Secondly, the government would have real concerns about the proposal to hold a referendum enshrining neutrality in the Constitution. The policy of military neutrality has always been and remains a deliberate policy choice on the part of successive governments since the Second World War. However, this motion, if passed, would seriously constrain the executive's ability to exercise its policy-making authority in the conduct of external relations, as already so in Article 29 of the Constitution. Indeed, we know from previous experience that inserting overly simplistic provisions into the Constitution on sensitive and complex issues does not serve this state. Well, I have yet to see any proposed wording about an insertion uh, or an amendment on, on, on putting uh, new, what form of neutrality? What's definition of, no, sorry, what definition of neutrality? I'm talking about a general debate. We know, Deputy, what happens in referendum Deputy and so Bezu, on like 10 that. Minutes to reply. And totally in the view of the government, the motion fails to adequately reflect the reality of the situation in terms of the use of Shannon uh, Airport. I know this is a hardy perennial for the deputies opposite, but as the government has repeatedly set out, all foreign military aircraft wishing to overfly or land as a state require diplomatic clearance. And this is subject to strict conditions, including that the aircraft is unarmed and carries no arms, ammunition, um, or explosives. It's also expressly prohibited for civil aircraft to carry munitions of war in Ireland without an exemption to do so by the Minister for Transport. There is a robust process in place for such exemptions, which includes advice from the Department of Foreign Affairs in respect of international humanitarian law and Ireland's international obligations. Let me reiterate once again that there are no transports of weaponry via Shannon or any other Irish airport to Israel, nor are the US troops transiting Shannon going to Israel or any other active conflict. In short, from a government perspective, the motion is presented is ill-conceived, partisan, and inherently problematic. It fails to demonstrate an understanding of what the policy of military neutrality actually means. It completely neglects the security risks that Europe and Ireland face today. And, and the uh, proposal in terms of, of neutrality, uh, in my view, is particularly ill-defined, inappropriate, and would significantly restrict future governments in terms of 
broader foreign policy um, and, and more important in, in terms of security challenges like cyber attacks and so forth and in terms of uh, subsea cables. Um, and, and, you know, we need the Oireachtas, the people elect the Oireachtas and the government to develop foreign policy and to develop policies. Uh, and that's the, the sensible way um, uh, to, to, to proceed. Um, and, um, and the last year's consultative forum um, was a very important forum. And what was striking was the attempts by the deputies opposite to stop it from ever happening. Um, and I thought it was fundamentally undermining democracy itself. There's a really strong intolerance of democracy from the deputies, deputies office. It's their way or the highway. And in terms of the Middle East, Ireland's position in the Middle East over the last three decades and more has been principled, uh, has been informed by the desire to get peace, to support the humanitarian needs of Palestinians, and we've raised it all over the world, including in the US. Unlike Sinn Féin, who didn't raise it at all in, in, with our colleagues in the United States, have never, through the very large fora that Sinn Féin have in the United States, you've never really uh, raised the Palestinian question as loudly as you've raised it here. I know that's the truth. Order, that please. is the truth. And uh, Order, it's always please. puzzled me, it's always puzzled me deputies. why Sinn Féin, deputies. You know, it's, it's, please. why Sinn Féin's social media platforms were never used extensively to promote your ideas um, around Palestine. Those are the reality. No, because your main focus in the United States is fundraising, not raising issues around foreign policy. That's the, the reality. Time. That's the fact. Um, um, and um, we are military neutral as a country. We're not politically neutral. We stand for human rights. We stand for freedom, for democracy, for the rules-based international order. Uh, and, and the approach suffuses everything we do, whether in relation to the conflict in Gaza or the invasion um, of, of Ukraine. Our enga international enga engagement is also underpinned by significant investment in our own security and defence architecture. And the work, this includes work to the tra transform our defence forces by increasing annual spending to 1.5 billion. Uh, I think I'm running out of time, Akaherli, and uh, thank you for your, your indulgence. Um, and thank you, Tarnister.